Turl. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I talk about centralized and decentralized systems a lot. And both exist for a reason. They are basically the inhalation and exhalation of the universe. They're, they're the two processes that reality uses. Contraction, which is centralization, and expansion, which is decentralization. So both are necessary. I mean, we can't exist without inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. So knowing when to use these two different systems is the real goal, I see. And one of the things that I've seen um, is that we can model things after things that already exist that work really well, that we know work well. Maybe there's something better, but we already know that these things work well, so we can start from that point and move forward and experiment. So what works well? Well, biology works really well. Uh, we know about biomimicry in the sciences, um, but that's a piecemeal approach. I'm looking at things in a grander approach, a big picture, large scale approach of seeing what the basic kinds of systems are in a living organism. So human bodies or any animal body um, or even a plant body, but specifically an animal body, um, we have centralized and decentralized functions within us. Now our whole body itself is about 10,000 estimated different species. So that's different gene sets. Um, and that comes as a surprise to a lot of people. We're not just two, the two human genes, homo sapien genes, uh, which are the mitochondria, which are inside the cell, and then the regular cells genes. Um, the mitochondria comes directly from the mother's lineage and only the mother, from what we understand. Although, who knows, we keep discovering new things. Um, but yeah, we have about 10,000 different species in us, give or take. That's the estimate. And most of those, obviously, about 10,000 of them are, um, are bacteria and, you know, I don't know, phages or something like that. But it's mostly bacteria, mostly in our gut. Um, but a lot of it also lives on our skin and, um, and in, you know, in some various other places. But those are all decentralized. So they all have different rules. Each of those species has their own set of rules for what they do. They have their own genes, which are their instructions. They don't, they don't follow one another's instructions. Nobody over, you know, no cells over here in my hand tell the cells in my heart what to do. Um, regardless of what species they are, regardless of what gene set they have. And then, of course, there's the, there's the genome, and then there's the phenome, which is sort of the nature and nurture of cells. So each cell on its own, you know, the skin cells have a different gene expression, they say. So it's, it's like there's a recipe, and then you every chef makes the recipe a little differently. So each cell has its own specific expression of the genes, the way it follow those, follows the rules. So this is all totally decentralized. There is no authoritarian ruler. There's no centralized system, not even the human genome, which is actually, of course, two sets of genes. There's no centralized uh, control system there. There's no centralized token, there's no money, there's no centralized um, set of rules of law books, there's no voting, there's no you know election of, of a leader. It's all totally decentralized. Everybody does their own thing. It's total chaos, except chaos is fine. It's a nice balanced chaos. There are healthy chaoses and unhealthy chaoses, I guess. Um, or there are chaoses that are useful for one thing and then chaoses that are useful for another thing. Um, so, so this decentralized system of the body does have centralized stuff. I mean, obviously the cells themselves are centralized. They have a, a single, well, two, in the case of Homo sapiens genes. Um, but they have, you know, the, each cell has its own central rules. 
that it obeys. But on the whole, all the different cells are decentralized. But the centralized stuff, what does exist, are, is the infrastructure. So we have two centralized systems in the body, and that is the nervous system and the circulatory system. And those are architectures, uh, infrastructures you can think of as being like the, um, the road system on our planet. Uh, that's the circulatory system. That's how transportation happens for the most part. I mean, obviously within things, I mean, I'm in a park right now and there are no roads here. There's a, there are paths here, but um, over there, there are no paths and over there, there are no paths. So, and people still go there, you know, and squirrels still go there and birds still go there and humans still go there. So soccer balls and basketballs. So there's a, a centralized infrastructure that's the main corridors of transportation in the body. And that's the circulatory system. And that's the, the blood, veins, and arteries um, that goes through the heart and everything. And that, that's, you can see maps of diagrams of that, which are, are pretty interesting. Um, they basically go through, it looks like a tree. It basically goes through the whole body, um, branching out. And then the other one is similar, only it carries, instead of carrying a material stuff, which is what the circulatory system carries, the material things around um, through the blood from one part of the body to another part of the body. And then there is the uh, nervous system, which carries information from one part of the body to another part of the body. And it's just information. It's not, a lot of people think, oh, the brain is the centralized authoritarian ruler of the body. It's not. Um, that's, that's sort of a, a funny little myth that we got. Um, but it is, in fact, um, it's basically a telephone network, um, just transmitting information. Um, and you could do whatever you want with it. Now, obviously, it makes more sense to actually, you know, pay attention to what the other parts of the body are saying. However, sometimes it gets ignored. Um, so sometimes we can ignore pain. Uh, if we know it's like I have tattoos, and so when the tattoos are happening, my body normally would send a thing saying, ow, that hurts, move, stop, <laughs> stop whatever it's doing. But, you know, other parts of my body um, and brain, whatever, say, oh, no, it's fine. I'm getting a tattoo. That's part of the process. It's going to hurt a little bit. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not super harmful so far, um, and, um, and it's okay. So just leave your hand there, and it'll, it'll happen, and you'll be okay. So the nervous system and the circulatory system send stuff from one part of the body to the other part of the body. And that's centralized in the sense that everyone is connected to it. Every cell in the body um, in some way is connected to the nervous system and the circulatory system in the same way that every human being and squirrel and bird and soccer ball on the planet Earth is connected to some kind of circulatory and nervous system. Whereas, for example, I can hear the bird right now. Maybe the camera can too. I'm not sure if the mic will pick it up, but there's a bird over there tweeting and um, I can hear it. Now, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, is it connected to the circulatory and nervous system? Well, it's connected to the circulatory system. It might not be necessarily connected to the nervous system, but we're, we're imagining that only humans are the nervous system, whereas there are probably birds that are hearing the tree falling in the forest, hearing it. And those birds are affected by that sound. Hi, bird, yes. <laughs> the bird came closer, just in case. So. It's centralized in the, the, um, the fact that it's, everything's connected. So the circulatory system and the nervous system affect everyone. Therefore, it's centralized. Now, it's democratic, which is different from, say, um, you know, a totalitarian system where there's only one individual or small group telling everyone else what to do. There's feedback. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an equal relationship or semi-equal relationship that you know, the sounds I'm hearing from the bird are affecting me, but also my sounds speaking are affecting the bird. Um, so it's, you know, back and forth as a feedback system. So it's democratic um, as a centralized system. And the same thing is with the body. Um, the, the nervous system is listening to the, um, you know, the, 
my, my hand is listening to what is going on in my brain and my brain is listening to what is going on in my hand and they're you know, talking back and forth. There's a feedback system there. So this kind of centralized system, fully democratic, um, in theory it's voluntary. I mean, all your cells could just leave you. <laughs> and, and sometimes they do. I mean, your hair falls out and, and when we you know, exhale, um, stuff comes out of the body. There's, you know, some of the cells, the oxygen, obviously, um, not, those aren't cells, but, you know, some of the stuff from inside your body comes out and uh, probably some of the cells here and there uh, come out when you exhale. Certainly when you spit or sneeze or, you know, scratch your skin, you know, your skin cells come off. So it's centralized but democratic and basically voluntary. That's a healthy system. That's a fully healthy, centralized infrastructure. Great. Hopefully that'll be quiet. You've got a noisy thing over there. Um, so anyway, okay, so centralized systems. We need one on the planet, right? In order for us to be fully mature as an Earth, we need to be connected. We need to be fully, voluntarily, democratically connected via these neutral, centralized infrastructures. And I'm proposing something for that. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that um, in a bit. But for now, I just want to say that this is a bottom-up process. This is not a top-down process. This is not authoritarian. This is going to happen regardless of what you and I do. We don't even intentionally have to do it. Certainly, if we have the intention of helping create a planetary system with an infrastructure where everyone is connected to being able to share in the resources the infrastructure uh, of the, the, the material resources so that things can flow freely from who's offering them to who's requesting them or, or who needs them. And also an information, an information infrastructure that shares freely information from who's generating it to who's requesting it or needs it so that we can all learn what we need to learn to make good decisions and that we can all get the material resources we need and, and you know matter and energy you know inputs into our body that we need to function properly and so that flow, flows freely so if we have this intention consciously we say yeah that's a good idea we want our planet to be well connected and for resources to flow where they need to flow so that everyone is as healthy as possible mentally and physically if we have this intention consciously we don't necessarily have to consciously do anything beyond that because most of what happens in our brain most of our decisions most of our our interactions with the universe are unconscious so all we really need to do is consciously have that mindset and then whenever we're in a situation where we need to make a decision we're far more likely to unconsciously make the right decision to get us closer there or one of the right decisions there are many many right decisions in a given situation there are many paths to getting to the top of the mountain right so any one path can can take you there you know, even if you wobble a bit this way, you can wobble a bit that way, you know, next. And, and you don't need to consciously do it, do it although sometimes you, you do. Sometimes we will consciously make decisions. Um, but either way, as long as we have this mindset, we'll start moving towards there. And the more people who have this mindset, the more humans have this mindset, and the more technology is given this mindset, programming, whatever we want to call it, the faster we'll get there, the more comfortably we'll get there. For the most part, there are always bumps in the road. You know, you trip and fall over a little stone and it hurts. Um, it happens. You know, not everyone will make it. I mean, that's just life. You know, there, there are a huge number of individual living things and we all have our own paths that we take and some are short and some are long. But overall, we're getting closer there the more we have this mindset. <laughs>